guys welcome back to my channel um it's tay tay baby i tried to put the food in front of me and i'm like kind of sitting back so you can still see me but i feel like people want to see the food more than they see me remember guys this is my first time doing this i don't know what the hell i'm doing but all i gotta say is i'm freaking hungry y'all like i only ate oatmeal this morning and that was this morning and i passed out after the gym y'all I'm a little bit upset or whatever um, because this is my grandma. It's her birthday. Happy birthday, grandma. But um, I'm a little upset because, well, not upset. I'm just like, uh, I freaking made a mukbang yesterday and then I have to do it all over again because it looks so bad. Like everything looked the same color. Like at least with this, you can see it's caramelized, baby. So I got um, a Crunch Wrap Supreme. I got those little Cine Delizzles. I got, I guess it's a Bedia, Bedia taco from Taco Bell with some consume sauce, apparently. And then I got a Doritos Locos taco with sour cream, so it's a Supreme. And then I got another one of these Bedia tacos. Um, so we're gonna see how much I can eat. <laughs> and then I'm also gonna be answering your questions. Um, I'm gonna put some of these down if I'm not eating them, so that way you can see what I'm eating at the moment. And we're gonna put sauce here because we got that nacho sauce. But y'all, one of the things I wanna talk about is if I'm looking at my phone, it's because I'm looking at you know topics so I don't fall off of track. But um, one of the things I wanna talk about is Myron from Fresh and Fit, y'all. Now, I was watching so many people stitch their videos and make videos on TikTok and y'all are evil as fuck. Y'all are so evil. This is Baja Blast, by the way. Y'all will literally make fun of people and kick them while they're down. And by the way, y'all, I have this little spray thing. It's with water and stuff so that Kitty does not jump on this because you guys, if she drops my camera, I tried putting her in the room yesterday and all she did was freaking scratch the door up and like mess things up. So I'm trying to get her not to do anything. Don't worry, it's only water in a, and it has like a little bit of coconut oil in it, but it's a cat coconut oil, a cat body spray. So we're going to eat this. I kind of am like, um, I'm like a little kid, by the way, so you're gonna be like, why do you eat everything plain? Because I'm a little kid. So we're finna dip it in the sauce. Dip it in the sauce. I wonder if you can hear me good, because I'm mic'd up, so. Mm. So it was either between this or Raising Cane's. And I don't really like Raising Cane's like that. It's not that I don't like it, it's just during um, quarantine time. I ate it so much to the point where I can't eat it anymore. The next mukbang I'm gonna do is a sushi mukbang. I know a bomb sushi place out here that has like fried lobster. They got tiger rolls. And I'm not really a sushi professional. So like I've been trying different types of sushis to see what I like. I can tell you right now, I don't be eating that stuff that's not cooked. I'm sorry, y'all. I cannot do the raw sashimi, whatever all those things are. I don't even know what that is. I just heard them say it at a restaurant. <laughs> Look at that, y'all. Look at that. I don't know if you can see it. Okay, zoom me out so you don't see my face. Yeah, baby. I'm just going to eat for a little bit because <sighs> you understand. And I'm trying to use natural lighting. I don't have my glasses on because when I leave my glasses on, you can see the light from the ring light. And it just messes everything up. But yeah, y'all, back to what I was saying with the Myron from Fresh and Fit, y'all. I'm not gonna sit here and excuse what Myron did. I'm sorry, I'm all about accountability. That guy should have shut the hell up a long time ago. Myron is really disrespectful and he's, he, I think people, I don't think I know, I've noticed people when they start getting up there with millions of followers, they start being arrogant with their stuff. Now I'm not saying he didn't help men. I'm not saying he didn't, you know, help men with mental issues. He taught you guys how to build six figures, how to be a certain type of man. But he talks so much about the division with men and women and that's all he was creating. He literally made a video where he's saying it's not important for a girl to orgasm and to get yours. You guys aren't gonna get women that way. The only type of woman you're gonna attract is a gold digger and a user and a woman who's gonna hate you in the long run. A lot of people will sit there and go, Tay, you're single, you shouldn't give advice. He's single and he's giving advice. And he's, not to be mean, but you can tell he has like a, 
he's very mean about things. He's not a happy person. And I can see he's always upset about things. And I'm not trying to kick him while he's down because that's not my motive because I actually do respect what he does. But calling black women porch monkeys and night riders and wearing a KK, you know what, hat and mocking people. What do you think's going to happen after that? Y'all, if I come on here and start talking crap about black people and making fun of people, what do you think people are going to think of me? I don't even say I hate women. I don't say shit like that. Now, I know I'm lethal at the mouth, so I ain't going to sit here and be like, oh, I'm perfect. I'm not. I'm lethal at the mouth, and I'd be cutting, cut it. I can't say too much. I was also going to say something. I was going to get in trouble. But no, but I'm lethal with my mouth, and I know it. But I don't come at people for no fucking reason. And Myron's a man, and I feel like he's always expressing, don't be emotional, don't be emotional. But it's like, bro, you're yelling at women. What do you think that is? And some of those women, y'all deserve that crap. I'm sorry. The girl who stepped on Myron's shoe and tried putting her hands on him, she should have been dog walked. But I watched a podcast one time of his, and I, guys, I used to watch stuff because of y'all. I never watch him on my own, but I watched a podcast of his, and it was a sweet freaking girl, man. She wasn't even being mean. She wasn't anything, and like she was just saying how she had a little bit of bodies and all that, and he's like, stop the cap, and they're all laughing and roasting her. It's like, dude, why do you guys treat the good ones like crap? Y'all swear up and down there's no good women. And then when you see good women on those panels, he makes fun of them or he belittles them. It's like, dude, that's so messed up. Y'all want women to care about your mental health, but y'all don't care about theirs. I'm all about equality, y'all, regardless of how I defend men. I'm still going to stand for men regardless. But if a man's wrong, you're wrong, bro. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. It has nothing to do with gender. We both should sit down and have common collective conversations. This is another thing I want to add to this. Why do you think I don't like going on these podcasts? Because y'all, I know that I look a certain way because of my tattoos. And back then I used to be super toxic and love to argue. It gives me so much anxiety to argue now. I just feel like there's no point of going around in circles. And for me, when I see that I can't get my point across with a man or a woman, I get so like, up. Oh, okay, I'm just gonna be like this. You see me on whatever podcast. I was like so quiet the entire time because I'm not going to argue with people who have a peanut for a fucking brain. You're listening. You're not even listening. You're arguing to get your point across and think you're the shit instead of arguing or debating, having a conversation to understand me. You know what I mean? You're not trying to you're not supposed to try to prove them right. And this and that you have your opinion. I have mine. Unless you have facts, that's different. So for me, these podcasts are, I'm, I'm sorry, they've ruined the whole idea of podcasts. It's just drama, controversy, people arguing. Myron should have had at least two, two days out of the week where he had women on his panel that were wives, good women, because you're portraying like everybody's a bimbo, everybody's dumb, everybody wants a guy who's six feet. Let's stop the cap. Guys, I've talked to guys before that were at my damn titty level and it didn't bother me. So when people say, oh, you guys all want six foot, stop speaking for me. Stop speaking for all of us. I would date a guy my height or shorter. It doesn't bother me, but he has to have the things that I want as well. And I have to be attracted to him. I'm not going to just date somebody because you want me to. I just get agitated with the way a lot of these podcast people run them because they speak as if they know everybody in this world. Yes, there's stats. Yes, certain things matter. But when you're speaking for all these women, but you only have bimbos on your panel, it's annoying. That's why I like talking and speaking my mind because y'all, I'm so tired of this same narrative. We're all dumb. We all have high body counts. We have my, I can count my bodies on a hand. So I don't like when people do that. It makes me feel like y'all are just trying to paint this narrative as all women are bad, all men are bad. Like the misandrist got to stop. And then the like super man hating, super feminist thing, all that stuff has to stop guys. Like the whole end goal is what? To be happy, to coexist, to make families. That's what I want. So you guys are like ruining the dynamic. Damn. Mm. Damn, baby. Mm. By the way, my air is on full blast. It's hot in this mother sucker. This is really good. Another thing, I watch videos of mukbang people and they smack a lot. Are you supposed to do that for videos? No offense, but I don't feel like I'm that, I can't do it. I'm sorry, y'all. And to one of my viewers, you asked me to do, um, I think it was an ASMR. Me, an ASMR. I am so fucking loud and I, 
I can't whisper for crap. I promise you that ASMR is going to be, hey guys, and I'm going to start fucking busting up <laughs> laughing. I can't do it, y'all. It just seems weird. I love watching them. Who knows? Maybe in the future. But yeah, back to what I was saying. I do feel bad for Myron because a part of me does understand that he did build this platform on his own. And I think it's messed up that you can't have freedom of speech. And like when I watch people like Jua Falu and other creators, Jua Falu literally said that men who go to concerts by themselves should K-I-L-L themselves, or she wants to K-I-L them, them. But she could say stuff like that, but you know, other people can't have freedom of speech. And I see so many women degrading men, telling them to off themselves, but you know, they still have platforms. That's the only reason why I'm like, eh, you know what, if you don't like somebody, stop watching them. You know what I mean? Like, at some point, like, dude, don't you guys know what the block button is? Y'all would just find any little reason not to like somebody, and that's how somebody makes their money. One thing about me, I don't like when people fuck with my money. Like, that's one way to set me off. Like, it's one thing to, you know, not like me, talk your crap, call me names, cool, that's fine. But messing with my money, you're gonna get a whole different type of tailor. I don't care how healed I am, how much God is in my life, I promise you, you finna piss me off. Finna piss me off. So this is the, the Bidia Taco, damn. That mother sucker leaking, soaking wet, shaking like a sour sugar. Damn. So it's supposed to be a BDI. Okay, it doesn't look that good. Well, it kind of does. It has cheese on the side. Dude, I don't know about y'all, but I'd be loving the cheese that's like, ooh, that sauce tastes good. So we're going to try. Let me not spill it now. I don't know if you could see it. I don't need to go like this and spill all over the floor. <laughs> um... Oh shoot, let me do this so y'all can see. I'm just not trying to spill anything, y'all. I don't usually eat on my desk, like whatsoever. Hold on, y'all. All right, y'all, my filming just got ruined because of Kitty. She just spilled my soda. Well, not all of it, but spilled on my desk. So now she's gonna have to go in the room. So if you hear little noises, y'all, that's Kitty being in the room. She's fine, it's just, I don't know what it is with Kitty, y'all. Y'all be knowing that she acts crazy as hell. Um, I don't even remember what I was saying before that. But yeah, you guys, okay, let's see. Let me dip it in the sauce. Gotta drown that, okay. That is not, that doesn't, look how that looks. Ew! No, I'm just kidding. All right, you finna. Y'all, that's a motherfucking 10. Y'all. Ay, Dios mío, me encanta. Sabe muy bien. Oh, my goodness gracious. Good golly, brother. <laughs> Dude, that's fucking good. I mean, sorry, God. Y'all, you know what's crazy? I stopped smoking. I stopped drinking. But the one thing I can't break is this Salem mouth, baby. Oh, my guys, This is really for being taco. But one thing about me, y'all. My favorite fast food place, I, I feel like I'd be the cheapest date. My favorite food place is Taco Bell. So when somebody was like, do Taco Bell, do Raising Cane's, or do Wings, I was like, I'm doing Taco Bell. I gave you guys three options to choose from. Wow, this is hella good. Mm. That shit is... Tastes so good, makes you want to smack your grandma out her motherfucking wheelchair. Okay, dude, I just said I'm gonna stop cutting. Guys, I'm so sorry. All right, I'm gonna stop saying sorry because my swear jar, if I had a swear jar, you guys, I'd be a millionaire. Because my favorite word is obviously, fuck. <laughs> Let me stop. Okay, I, uh, all right. And the sauce, mmm. Mm. That sauce is, I could drink that most sucker. Mm. I'm trying to look for my phone. This is so good. Can you hear me? Ah. <laughs> Y'all, you know what song has been in my head every single day for the past like three days? 
Um, the song by System of the Down. Aerials. Doom, 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 doom. Doom, 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 doom. Okay, let me stop. This is why I be choking on my food. Like, y'all, I was on live the other day eating oatmeal, and I laughed. Oh, my God. I almost seen God. <laughs> Not funny, but... Okay, we finna eat this whole thing. Hold on. That shit's packed with flavor. Just like this, but... <laughs> All right, let me not laugh and eat. All right, one taco down. Mm. Now, I'm going to answer some of the questions that you guys gave me. And we're going to see what you got to got to say baby by the way i hope everybody's good mentally i hope that you are enjoying your beautiful uh monday god bless each and every one of you thank you for watching this video thank you for tuning in it's always truly appreciated y'all i better have not deleted these dang questions hold on y'all my bad my bad i'm like a grant okay perfect so first apartment advice oh shoot so first and foremost, you better save a lot of money. You want to save the first and second month's rent. So just add those two things up, whatever your rent is. And then you also want the, the admin fee, uh, the application fee, and then you're going to need a security deposit. Every apartment is different. I saved up about five, six K to come to these apartments and they're not even the best ones, but God bless it because I have a place. It doesn't matter if I'm living in the ghetto or not. Shit. I have a, my own room for the first time. I've never had my own room and I'm 28. Um, so yeah, save a lot of money. And then also don't try to splurge too much on buying all this crazy stuff. You know, go to the 99 cent store, get cleaning products. You can get freaking toilet paper, Comet, Ajax, all that. Those are cleaning products at the 99 cent store, a dollar tree. You can buy a little dollar trash can, all that. Don't overbuy things because you want to be able to have money for food. Another thing, make sure you're around local stuff. Like, um, you're by a school, by a police station, you're by, um, you don't have to be, but I'm just saying in general, um, you're by, uh, food places, you're by a gym, things like that. If you ever lose your car, it's walking distance. Don't be living in the desert, especially if you, if you ain't got no family and nobody to help you, I'm telling you, be very mindful of what you surround yourself around. And if you can, I would tell you now, I suggest you living around older people or around a better area, because when you're around bad things and bad areas, you can get your car broken into things like that. So first apartment advice, save up. What I did, um, when you live with your parents or whatever, you stay with your parents and I would suggest this. I worked at Amazon and I loaded trailers and I was a girl. I made about a thousand bucks a week, maybe more than that. Um, and I worked like 15 hour shifts. So I don't want to hear, oh, I don't want to do it. I didn't want to do that shit either, but I wanted to do it so I can get the hell out of there. You want something bad enough, you're going to push yourself. And if you're asking me for advice, I'm going to push you to be better. So, and one of the things about me is I'm a workaholic. Since I was a kid, my grandpa has taught us all, we're Mexican, I'm sorry. I might be black and all that stuff, y'all, but I was raised in a Hispanic household. We were working at what? When I started working, I was like 12 or 13 or 11. I don't know. My grandma had me working at a VFW. I can get into that story after. But um, long story short, I just ended up working at Amazon, racking in as much money as I could, saving the money, not eating out, eating. I was eating a little bit, y'all. I'm not going to lie to you. I was eating top ramen and I was really skinny back then, drinking monsters to keep myself up. Don't do that. But um, yeah, I ended up saving and racking up money so that I can get an apartment and stuff. But at the time I was in a relationship, so I had help. You know, so I would just recommend saving up as long as you can. And if you can't do that, you can go to the freaking, um, I mean, if you can't get a job right away, there's CSL plasmas. People are going to be like, oh, this is crazy. But all you do is smoke and drink and stay home and you don't have a job. So what would you rather do? Sell your stuff or make some money in a certain way? Not everybody knows how to do stocks. Not everybody knows how to do cryptocurrency. And those things I might teach you later. But um, you can go to CSL Plasma. The first uh, five times is $100. So you go twice a week, you get 60 bucks. That's 120 a week. That 120 with the $5 bus fee every day, or you can buy the $30 fee, you can literally take the bus to Amazon, bus to UPS. And guess what? UPS and Amazon now are six-figure jobs. I was even thinking about going back just so I can rack in that money. I want a PS5 right now. But anyway, I suggest you do that. Save as much as you can. Don't go out. When you're young, you might think that going out, having fun, having friends and having fun and all that's good. But before you know it, your life's going to go like that. And you're going to realize, damn, I wasted all my time partying, having fun. And now I'm like set back. 
If you start from 18, by the time you're 21, you can be set in life. So by the time you're 28 to my age or whatever, close to 30, you'll be set, y'all. So I'm trying to give you advice so that you can be set up for life. And like I said, a lot of these jobs aren't the best, but they're going to get you to where you want to be, especially if you want to go to school or things like that. Like I said, if you want other advice from other people, go ahead and take that. But me personally, that's how I ended up getting quick, fast money. And then once I became 21, I became a bartender and made about 5K a check and what, two, 300 bucks a night, maybe 800 on a good night. So you can get into bartending too. You can be a bar back on top of that. You could be a server, but get a job that gives you tips so that that way you can get tips every time you leave. When I tell y'all, I'm a, I'm a hustler. So when it comes to jobs, if I don't know how to do it, I'm going to figure out how to do it. I've done so many things, housekeeping, customer service. I've drove in limos. I used to be a night dispatch. I used to check the, and audit the tapes for the limo drivers. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. I used to be a bilingual dispatch. I said housekeeper already. I used to be a, a cook. I used to be a prep cook. Um, I used to be a server, bartender, a bar back, busser. I've done it all, you guys. I've been a kitchen a cleaner. I don't care what it is. If it's going to pay 28 bucks an hour, I'll scrub walls. That's how much I'm dedicated to making money. I don't give a fuck how I look. Oh, you work there? You're a dishwasher? Yeah, and what? And I make more money than you do. I used to work on the strip and get, tw get paid $27.50 to be a dishwasher. Yeah, it wasn't the funnest, not gonna lie, it does crack your hands and make it bad, but one, benefits are a bomb over there, and then two, man, I don't know, like I said, all I care about is money at the time, I don't care about the rest of the stuff, but you don't have to do the same thing. All right, y'all, next question, situation chips, why did I say it? situation chips? Hola, como esta? Soy Taylor. I sound all hella Hispanic. Situationships, helping men with avoidant attachment styles, trauma to be more trusting after a mean ex. Oh, baby, that's a good motherfucking question. So first and foremost, um, avoiding attachment styles can be built two ways or can happen two ways. It could either be because when he was younger, his mother or father didn't talk to him about things and pushed his feelings aside. Or his parents could have been abusive and he was told, you know, suppress those emotions. And a lot of men, not all, a lot of men have avoided attachment styles. I don't blame them, though, you know. I blame the parents partially for not knowing a lot of knowledge. But... A lot of men as well, they could be full of love. They get with their first love and that girl destroys them, cheats on them, fucks them over. A lot of men have this and it's really sad to say, y'all will let that one girl break your heart so bad that you will not be able to love other women. I can tell you right now, a lot of y'all need to heal. And don't give me that because I counsel men. Y'all need to heal before you even start entertaining other women. Because if you have this untrusting, everybody's gonna hurt me, boohoo mentality, it's life. We get hurt. People don't appreciate us. You know what you got to do? Roll with the punches and keep it moving. I've been hurt. I've been rejected. I've been played. And I don't sit here and weigh the trauma on my back and go, oh my God, I know we're all different, but I have to understand that the more people that fuck me over, it gets me closer to my destination and meeting my king. It's the same thing with you. If you keep having that boohoo mentality and everybody's going to hurt me, everybody's going to this, you're manifesting that. You're going to self-sabotage. You don't want to do that, you guys. You want to have a very positive mindset no matter what you go through. It's okay to have bad days. It's okay to feel certain things. I'm not one of those women that's like, men, be strong. Nah, dude. If you have to feel those things, feel them. But you should not be sitting there five years later talking about, oh, I can't get over my ex. How, bro? She done sucked 60 peepees and you're not over her. Be. I never understand that. Couldn't be me. I'm going to get mine regardless. I'm going to get my love, get my king regardless. That's my mindset because I have faith in God. But the other thing with the avoidant attachment styles, when a man is avoidant, you do not want to be pushy. You do not want to be forceful. You do not want to talk to me, do this, do, no, no, no. When a man is avoidant, don't be naggy. Don't be pushy. Be super patient. Paciente, ¿me entiendes? Take your time with this man. Everything that he tells you that that mean ex did to him, don't you freaking repeat that. I'm going to say that again. Don't you repeat that. She lied to him. She cheated on him. She hit DMs, whatever. Don't you fucking do the same thing to that man. Because how dare you sit there, hold him, hug him, say, oh, you're my king if you're going to do the same shit the last girl did. So you better love that man wholeheartedly. I always say this. If you are going to get with men with avoidant attachment styles, PTSD, depression, unaliving thoughts, you better... You better take care of that man because that shit pisses me off. You cannot sit there and let this man tell you his whole life story just to dagger him up in the back again. That's messed up. Especially because men, I know that men are very untrusting, but men love with all they got. I'm sorry. You cannot sit here and tell me they don't because I've seen my brothers. I've seen my guy friends. They love with everything they got. So when I'm telling you now, love that man. When he comes into the house and you guys live together, you better be... 
Oh my God, babe, praise him. Don't sit there, don't ignore him. When you guys have arguments, don't you stoop low and disrespect him. You better, callate, throw that key away and be quiet and let it be. And if he is upset at you and you guys don't see eye to eye, okay, babe, I understand. If I did something wrong to you and you don't want to talk, I'll talk to you later. I'll give you space. It's going to hurt you. It's going to make you feel some type of way. And this is things you have to build. But don't go having an anxious attachment style, forcing him to talk, forcing him to do this, forcing It's not going to work. The, the best thing you could do is love that man. And then when he tells you, ask him, what's your physical touch? I mean, what's your physical, <laughs> what's your love language? What, what makes you feel loved? And when he tells you physical touch, words of affirmation, gift giving, you better ride that out. If a man tells you what he likes, you better be doing that. Make him breakfast in the morning. Men love that. You know what I mean? If you can gossip, if you can go spend your money on blunts, spend your money on hot Cheetos and all this dumb stuff, you can go buy a little cheap lingerie, put that stuff on, have breakfast ready for him. Men are so simple, you guys. Men are like the simplest creatures on earth. Like even, even you buying him things, when you buy yourself something, babe, I got these shoes. You don't have to. It's just a thought. Babe, I bought these shoes or whatever. I got you some too, you know? That's a good gesture. You went to the store. You got something. You got him something too. Show that man you care. Show that man you're thinking of them. Men want to be needed and desired. They don't want to be with no independent boss B. So I'm letting you know that now. If you want to help a man with an avoided attachment style, it's all about patience. And it's all about you compromising and you both sitting down with one another and listening to him. And like I said, it does get frustrating because avoidant attachment styles run from emotions. They shut down sometimes. So you can't be upset when he does that. And like I said, I've been with an avoidant and I wasn't the best at understanding what that meant until I got into therapy, till I learned boundaries. So when I tell you this stuff does work, please use these tactics. All right. Next question. Who's the creepy, <laughs> who's the dude in the creepy man at the gym video? <laughs> Y'all, that shit's funny. <laughs> Hold on, because uh, the creepy guy in the video, so I named one of my shorts creepy guy in the video following me. Y'all, that's my friend. <laughs> that's my friend. He's super cool. I'm not going to name drop. We work out together. He's a really good friend of mine. Honestly, one of the best people that I've met so far. Crazy dark humor, hilarious as hell, has a beautiful wife and all that, and we just work out together, y'all. He's not creepy at all, dude. I would not be hanging out with anybody like that. So, oh my God. Ooh, this question's good. You guys are asking some good. I love y'all. All I got to say is thank you so much, you guys, for finally asking me polite questions and not these, how big is your titties, Tay? Make them jump. All you guys with those nasty comments, y'all need to put yourself in a straitjacket. Stop it now. Stop talking to me like that before I get kitty to claw your eyes out. But anyway, somebody said how to handle rejection with maturity. I'm the pimp at that. So when I tell you guys... The reason why I know so much is because, one, I used to do a lot of dumb stuff. I was young. Still am. And then also, I would see certain things my brothers would do and other people, and I just pick up things as I, like, I retain information a lot. Like, oh, I ain't going to do that. I see how that makes somebody react. Oh, I see how that person looks. One thing, I'm let you know this now. I'm going to give you scenarios. So you're a guy, right? You go up to a girl. She's with her homegirls. Hey, you know what? I think you're really beautiful, miss. Can I take you out? You were nice about it. You were sweet. She laughs makes fun of you in front of all the girls. First and foremost, I think that's disrespectful. I think that women should just say no thank you and that's it. Um, if she starts roasting you and all her friends, uh, ugly, this and that, you don't need to go, man, fuck you, bitch. Okay, you only gonna make her go, yup. That's exactly why I don't wanna get with him. If you do that, you're gonna give that person the reason why, oh yeah, see, I already knew you were like that. Plus you look crazy. Nobody wants to be with somebody who acts like that. Okay, thank you, have a good day. I know it hurts, and I know rejection feels like crap, you guys, but you have to understand, you can't control what other people do, but you can control how you react. And if you're in public acting like that, and you're a grown-ass man, I suggest not approaching women with their homegirls. I suggest approaching women on their own, and don't pry. You know what I mean? Compliment her, get in there, get out. Ask her what you need to ask her and get out. If she don't want your number, keep it pushing. Have a good day, miss. Have a good day, beautiful. Kill him with kindness. You don't need to sit there and be, oh, F you, this, you big old fat cat. What's the point of that? Now you look like a psycho in front of everybody. And if anybody sees you, I wouldn't want to date you if I seen that. Now here's another scenario. You're with a girl. Y'all together. You guys been talking. And she tells you, I don't want to be with you no more. Whether it's a breakup or, oh, I'm not really feeling it. I went on a whole bunch of dates with you, but I'm not feeling it. Maybe she used you. Maybe she didn't. Do you think it's best to, I fucking did this, I did that? The reason why I tell you guys to calm it down and learn to control your emotions, because we are grown and we know what we're doing. 
You think women don't know when they're using people? You think women don't know when they're being malicious? They don't give a F. They don't. They really don't. So you acting crazy and doing all that stuff, sending paragraphs and doing all that, they don't care. And all you're doing is feeding their ego. Once I learned that some people actually get off on you uh, popping off or seeing you flip out, women love to see a man emotional. I hope you know that. That's why I tell you guys all the time, be stoic. Don't let anybody get you out of character like that. Unless another man's playing with you in a rude way or whatever and messing with your, you know, your manhood and all that. I get that. But a woman, don't stoop down to a woman's level because she's always going to try to piss you off and then be like, yep, see, see, especially if she rejects you and says, hey, I don't want to be with you no more. Or I don't think this is going to work. And you pop off. I took you on dates. I did this. I did that. Just say, okay, cool. I was thinking the same thing. I'm sorry, y'all. I don't do that anymore. I used to do that, y'all, where I would like go back and forth and like talk to people and like explain myself. You don't like me? All right, that's fine. I'm not gonna explain it. If you look at me and you don't see my worth, I'm not gonna sit here and force you to see my worth. That doesn't make any sense. You shouldn't do that either. That's why I keep telling y'all, when you are by yourself, y'all need to practice being alone. Y'all will jump from relationship to relationship to relationship and you don't practice being alone. I was never this confident. I never loved myself as much as I do now. So when I talk to somebody and they do something that doesn't serve me or they're putting my mental health in harm's way, you're done. I have the most stern boundaries and I'm the easiest person. I understand, you know, forgiveness is the way to keep it going. But if you're going to be Breaking up with me, bring it back, rejecting me, all this stuff, I'm not doing it because I'm not a kid. I don't want to play mind games. I want a man who's sure of himself. You should want a woman who's sure of herself. And you should want a woman who knows what she wants. The hell? We are not freaking in high school. So, next question. What martial art are you training in? So, Muay Thai is what I'm training in. Um, I can go into a, a video and rant about that, but um, I want to wait a little bit um, because I think I might be doing it this month or next month. I'm waiting on the guy because I kind of want to get coaching with other people, but I want to get private coaching on my own and I, I want to do it as quick as possible. I'm not trying to be a professional fighter or nothing, but y'all were telling me I should. Who knows? Maybe that might be in the cards for me, depending, you know? Um, but yeah, I want to keep that a little secret until, you know, I just show you my, um, my clips of my actual fights and stuff. So next. Who craves sex more, men or women? I, will, I would want to say women now. Like, um, I think Black Spider Guy talked about this. He said that the stats have went up for more virgin men, um, which I think is like 15% or something like that. And uh, are we seeing OF? Are we seeing $2.99 for the front, $2 for the back? What do you mean? I would say women right now. It was, I think it was men before, but now I think it's men and women tied. But women right now, you're the most promiscuous things on earth. And I'm not saying all. Anytime I say something, y'all, I don't need to hear, oh my God, in the comments. Dude, nobody's saying all women. Calm down. Y'all be getting crazy for nothing. Eat a Snickers, B. Well, focus, yeah, baby. Looks dry as hell. Like your hair. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But, um, yeah, I think women are more, more um, sexual and stuff now. Especially with the way social media and all that's going. All right, y'all. I got to eat this stuff fast. I'm like just now realizing I'm like bumping my gums too long. Oh my God, it's falling apart, bro. No freaking way. <gasps> Look at it, y'all. How am I going to eat this? All right, hold on. That's actually good. Um, next question. How do you deal with trauma and moving on and forgiving? Well, first off, it depends on what your trauma is. Trauma is way different for everybody. And the reason why I say that is because some people have really bad, deep trauma and some people don't have that much trauma. I suggest you get your buns in the gym and I suggest you start journaling. You should write down all the things that bother you and all the things that have happened in your life. And I suggest you remove the things that have bothered you. So if you have people in your life that have abused you, have done stuff to you, I don't understand why y'all keep people in your life like that. Oh, it's my mom. Oh, it's this. I cut a lot of my family off and I'm so much happier. When I, when I tell you the times that I've had my family in my life, like my mom and stuff like that, 
my mental sanity was so bad. Always crying, always sad, never felt good enough. And like that person always putting that in my head was no good for me. My mom's been out of my life for years. And don't get me wrong, of course I would want a mom. Of course I would want to talk to her. Of course I, I want those things. But I've learned to accept that's not my life anymore. That's not something God gave me. God gave me a grandma. God gave me a purpose. God gave me other things. Instead of looking at the stuff that you don't have, focus on the shit you do. You know what I mean? And a lot of people do that. Well, I didn't have a dad. I didn't this, I didn't that. I didn't have a mom. You don't ever hear me come on these apps and complain and boohoo about not having a mom. What I'm doing now is being the best version of me that I can be so I can be a great mom. I'm learning from my mom's mistakes so I never repeat the same shit she did. Make sense? So I want you guys to understand the same thing. Yes, that wound is going to hurt. Yes, that's going to bother you, but you have to fix that. Stop drinking, stop smoking, stop hanging around your fucking friends who aren't going to help you. You guys get advice from people who aren't better in life. You know that, right? I see so many women and men going to their homeboys and your homeboy doesn't even have a good life. And I'm not trying to be rude or, or disrespectful, but you guys know I'm brutally honest. I don't go to my friends for stuff. I go to a therapist or I go to somebody like my grandma who's happy, healed, and can help me. Make sense? Go to people who are good for you. Go to people that you want a life like. You know what I mean? If I wanted to be a billionaire, do you think I'd be talking to somebody down the street? No. I don't want to talk to somebody who has billions of dollars. It's just an example. But with trauma... It, it takes a lot of work, you guys. It takes a lot of work. I would say these last two or three years, or no, two years, for sure I've been healed. But before then, mm -mm, it took me a long time. And I, maybe one day I'll get into like certain things, but I have went through a lot of stuff. I grew up in poverty. I grew up in and out of foster care. I was abused as a child. Um, I have scars all over my back from being abused. I got taken away from my mom because she used to burn me with cigarettes. So I'm letting you know now, if you can see how severe my mom used to starve us, things like that, you'd understand my trauma roots deep. But I don't make that, I don't weigh that on my back and, and let it stop me from being me. Statistics even show that people, kids in the foster system, don't fucking make it. Look what I did with my life. I have my own apartment, my own room. I have my own bed. To some people, they might be, oh, it's not all that. I have my own bed. I don't live in chaos anymore. I live in peace. You, I love you. I care about your mental health. And to the person who, who asked this, I swear to God, man, I hope you're okay mentally because I'm telling you right now, when you grow up in crap mentality, people are fucking with your head, your family's abusing you, nobody has your back and all that, get closer to God. I promise you get closer to God. You and God are the only person you have. And the reason why I say that is because when you look at outside sources that aren't going to help you, you're going to forever wish you had that and it's going to keep you stagnant. But what you can do is create your new reality. Think about this. You're abused your whole life. You had people treat you like shit your whole life. You felt alone your whole life. Are you going to keep doing that for the rest of your life when you have control of your life now? Remember, this is like a video game. Once you figure out how to control your mind and master your emotions, you run that shit. When I figured out what can help with depression, anxiety, and all that, yo, I don't be crying like that. I don't feel depressed. I don't feel anxious. I don't nothing. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't use anything. Yo, I don't even take medication. I'm letting you know this now. Please, you guys, like, I feel like I'm a product of what I talk about. And I, you don't have to take therapy forever. You can do this stuff on your own, but you have to do extensive amount of doing the self-work. Do your shadow work. Work out, write things down you don't like about yourself and then fix them. And what are you going to do better? You have anger issues? Stop letting people trigger you. Stop letting people get under your skin. Learn to understand that's how people are. People are negative and people like to put other people down. But what are you going to do? React to it better. Are you going to boohoo about not having things or make your life better and make sure you have those things? By the time you are old, I don't want you to ever look back and sit there and go, I wasted my time being angry. I wasted my time wishing this and wishing that when you could have been doing it. Like I said, you're your own main character in your game. You better ride that shit out, baby. I believe in you. Please, I'm letting you know now. All you need is you and God and get yourself like out there. And got guys, the thing that bothers me the most is a lot of people are like, you shouldn't even give advice. You're a girl. You're this. I never sold my body to get to where I'm at. I didn't cheat to get where I was at. I didn't do any of that stuff. I hustled my way to the top. I crawled out of this fucking depths of whatever to get to where I'm at. If you guys would have seen me a couple years ago, I was depressed. I was sad. And I was in a relationship, y'all, in shambles. And right now I'm whole. I'm at peace. I'm happy. I'm very strong now. You know what I mean? I never say I'm independent. I'm self-sufficient because I want a man. I want a good man. But I'm just letting you know now, y'all, you can overcome it. Stop saying you have depression. Stop saying you have this. Stop saying all these things you're putting into your mind. I have anxiety. I have this. I have that. Stop saying that. 
Stop speaking to yourself negative. When you look at the, the best people in the world, uh, Tony Robbins, David Goggins, Jordan Peterson, how do they talk to themselves? Exactly. You don't know me, son. You don't know me. They don't fucking go, I'm depressed, and they don't do that. They're not boohooing. Do you know why? Your mind is the strongest thing, and your body follows. So if I keep going, mm, I'm depressed, and, and I'm doing nothing with my life, of course you're going to be depressed. Get off the video game and go outside. Guys, I got rid of my PS4. I promised myself I'd get a PS5 when I was finished with school, when I got an apartment and did everything I had to do. And I love video games. Y'all know this. So I'm telling you now, put the stuff away that you don't need and start doing the things you need for yourself. Do that shit now, please. Don't waste your time. Stop drinking, stop smoking. It doesn't help. If you guys look at the side effects of what drinking does, it causes more irritability, more depression, more anxiety, and more unaliving thoughts. And stop watching corn. Stop watching pornography. It's bad for your mindset. Telling you right now, y'all, a lot of these things I tell you, I've done myself. I'm not just sitting here telling you what to do. I'm trying to help you. And how to, moving on and forgiving. I used to hold grudges bad. I used to be like, why me? Hate the person. Let it go. You can't do anything about it. You don't need closure. You can get closure from somebody and the closure is not even great. Like I wanted somebody to apologize to me so bad and this person broke my heart, destroyed me and all I wanted was an apology without me having to ask for it. When they apologized, I was like, dude, that's what I was waiting for? Bitch ass closure. So for me, I've learned to understand you did what you did at the cost of my emotions. God bless you, I wish you the best, I'll pray for you, but we're good. And I used to be the type of girl to say, I hope your fucking car flips. I am a very mean person back then. I used to wish down, I, on the people that hurt me, I used to, oh, I hate them, I, I hate this. I was one of those girls. Now that I'm older, y'all, I don't talk like that no more. I feel like because I believe in God now, I have so much more love, even though I'm very like, you know, I'm passionate as hell. It comes off aggressive and masculine, but I'm very passionate. Passionate, passionate, <laughs> passionate But yeah, I'm very passionate about things. Like y'all can see that when I talk about these things, it sets my soul on fire. Cause I've been wanting to help people my whole entire life. And I've been trying, my whole life to figure out ways to get rid of depression and get rid of these feelings and get rid of like wanting to unalive myself. And I feel like I cracked the code. But it all starts with you and your mindset. Ooh, the first book I ever read, Master Your Emotions. I'm telling you right now, that's the first book I ever read. And look, if you have more problems, this is It Didn't Start With You. Um, how inherited family trauma shapes you, shapes who we are, and how to end the cycle. Y'all, remember, before social media ever come about, came about, what do you think people were doing? Reading. I'm telling you now, you want to learn about your mind? Start reading psychology books. Start reading the benefits of what reading does for you every day. Come on, y'all. Stop being on your phone. Stop being stagnant. Stop going out to party. Stop doing that. I'm young, you guys. I could be out partying. I could be out being a city girl. I could be out doing all this stuff. I don't want to do that. I want to be an example for people and I want to be an example for my future daughter. I, like when I hear these girls, who's your idol? Meg the Stallion, sweetie. The fuck? The hell? Those bitches are remedial. My idol's my grandmother. You wish I would say some crazy shit like that. So I'm letting you know now, please, be a role model for yourself, for the people around you, and for your future kid if you do want that. You don't want to look in the mirror and not be proud of who you are. I don't want to look in the mirror and be disgusted of who I am. And I just want to add this to you. Add this to this. Please be kind to people because it's cost-free. Please be nice and sweet and whatever because it's cost-free. You don't understand how much anger I had when I was younger and how much time I wasted on being angry. And my grandma used to always say, don't sweat the small stuff. You know what I mean? So now that I'm older, I'm like, yo, she's right. Because I used to be like, all right, grandma. You know, I didn't want to hear that stuff. But now that I'm older, I understand where she's coming from now. And now I'm so like at, at peace and I'm so happy. Like, yo, I got my car stolen. I was, I was bummed out about it, but I didn't react the way that I thought I was. I thought I was going to be pissed. I thought I was going to be mad. Nope. Started running to the gym back. Started doing what I got to do. Content creating more. You, 
You can't control things, you know what I mean? And trying to control things and do all this crazy stuff, you're gonna fixate on that instead of enjoying life. What happens with us is we try to control everything instead of rolling with life. I feel like when you keep getting the same thing thrown at you, it's because God's testing you and that's your lesson. So if people keep talking to you crazy, keep doing certain things, that's God telling you, you can't handle criticism. That's God telling you, you have anger issues. Why would God put you at the next level when you can't even handle this level? You can't even handle being talked to for a little bit. Like y'all want to be content creators so bad, but somebody tells you one thing and you're popping off on them. You can't even handle this little bit now. If you could barely handle certain things you're going through now, what makes you think you can handle the big dog shit? That's why God puts you through the things he does to make sure that you understand. All right, now you're prepared, my son or my queen. So I'm telling you now, you don't might not believe in God, but I sure do. And for all the people, God doesn't exist. All this stuff here is man-made. Everything man-made. All this stuff here, men have made. Men have built this desk, built these phones, all this stuff. Who the fuck made planets? Oh, I'm sorry. People just jump out and, and make planets now. Who created this world? All right, cool. Like I said, next. Next one, people ignoring the feelings of others and making everything a problem. So first and foremost, if you're gonna get with any woman or any man, the one thing you want on that person is empathetic. You don't need them freaking being, oh baby, no. But if you're crying or like you, they see somebody doing something, like not bad or going through something, they're an empathetic person. They can understand that. I'm telling you now, you do not wanna be with somebody who's not empathetic. Cause if you're ever crying or going through stuff, they don't give a fuck about nothing in this world but themselves. You think they're gonna care about you? And one thing, another, uh, another thing, sorry making everything a problem. I don't mess with people like that. Like I said before, I lost my car. I could have went mother effort, got upset, did all this and made a big old thing. Damn, this shit's falling apart and made a big old deal about it. It's out of my control. Crying about it, boohooing about it. Is that going to bring my car back? No, it's not. So I say people will go through things, bash their windows, break their shit. And it's like, dude, when that's all said and done, how do you feel? Like an idiot, right? Exactly. People who make problems out of everything or make things more dramatic, I can't stand people like that. You could stay away from me with that shit. Like an example, it's like your kid spilling something on the floor, you screaming and yelling at them, and, oh my God, this and that, just pick it up. You can make, the, you can make it a big deal or just pick it up. Like, you know what I mean? Same thing with uh, another example. You're with your partner and you're a girl Oh my gosh, you never do the dishes. Oh, your clothes are on the floor. Your clothes are this. Just pick it up. All that making things a problem, all that running your mouth for that five minutes, you could have picked that up in less than five minutes and shut the hell up. Exactly. I'm a problem solver. I don't like creating problems. And y'all, I, I told you, I come from a Mexican household. Latinas, something's wrong with us. We love to argue. We love a good tussle. I don't know what it is with us. You want to argue with us? We take that as challenge accepted. It's like something activates and we go, we're crazy. We're fucking crazy. Damn, dude. Damn, Daniel. So yeah, just don't be around people who create problems. That's why I like men so much. I love men. You'll be going through the craziest shit. And they're just like, oh, all right then. What do you want to do next? Women? Oh my God. Y'all can't even say you're dramatic. You women are. Watch Bad Girls Club. You touch my drink. I left my drink right here and you put my drink over there. You motherfucker. You see what I'm saying? It's like, girl, it's not that serious. Like there's girls on Bad Girls Club that I've seen that I'm like, y'all be making anything a fucking problem. Anything a problem. She said this about my hair. She said, girl, who cares, bro? Damn. I don't care if somebody's talking about me. Once I hear somebody's talking about me, you must want this Starburst, baby. You must know that shit glistening from the back. Ah! I've learned again. I don't care about what people think about me. You're talking about me, right? So that means I'm doing something right. <laughs> and shout out to all my haters watching this. I know you guys love watching me. I'm leaving a whole bunch of hate comments. Suck on these. <laughs> Ew, no. You probably would want that. Hell no. Ew. Um, oh, that's good. So that's most of the questions or whatever, y'all. I'm just going to go off the dome now. We finna finish this. I'm not really full, which I'm actually shocked about.
That's actually really good, guys. I'm not gonna lie. The next one, I think we're gonna do sushi or freaking wing stop. I love wing stop. Y'all already know this. Mmm. I definitely wanna do more of these talks. I actually think these are beneficial. But yeah, guys, just be very mindful of the people you surround yourself with. As I'm getting older, all my friends, and I'm so happy that I have this. Because when I was younger, I used to have a lot of dumb friends. Like, I, I just wanted to have, I didn't have family like that, you know? I got kicked out at a young age. Um, my mom was a drug addict. So, like, I would be around anybody who made me feel like they, like it was home or it was family. And, like, I would get super close to people super fast. So I would just make friends with anybody. But I started realizing I was keeping the wrong company, you know? I had friends who would cheat, friends who would do stupid stuff. And... It was just dumb, you know? And now that I'm older, if you see most of my friends now, they're married, um, and my friends are single, you know, they're just very chill, they stay home or whatever. Um, so I don't know, I just say keep, keep in mind what kind of friends you have because you don't want people ruining your life. And when you're around chaotic friends, friends who are always in jail, friends who are always in trouble, remember, that shit will end up catching up to you. I'm gonna eat these little, what do you call it, things? So that's why I say just be very mindful of who you keep around. I'm telling you now, it's not worth it to have like crappy friends. But um, <clears throat> you guys always ask me the same question, so that's why I always answer them. Um, as you guys know, my name is Taylor. I'm 28 years old. I'm a Capricorn, a January Capricorn at that. Yeah, I know. The best sign in the whole world. I don't give a shit about zodiac signs. I used to like care about them back then but now that I'm older I don't really believe in the, the the signs I just don't know what it is about that I don't believe in those uh crystal rock things I understand that there's certain crystals that have healing powers because the natives and all that but if you're a person who doesn't know about that and doesn't know how to do that girl sit down take your take your ass somewhere else nobody wants to hear that shit mm. these are good They have cream inside them. They like explode in your mouth. Whoa. <laughs> Pause. What the fuck was that? Cut. <laughs> oh my God, guys. This is Taylor's last and final mukbang. <laughs> what the hell did I just say that for? All right, guys. Everybody bow down their heads as we pray. What the hell did I say that? I'm so embarrassed right now. <laughs> nah, I'm not embarrassed. But yeah, look. They just glisten. Look at, they're loaded with sugar. I love that. <laughs> One thing about me, I have a sweet tooth. I always have and I always will. Ooh. These are fire. I'm sorry. Y'all, I used to eat a 12 pack of these. These are really good. Mmm. -hmm. And by the way, I hope you guys enjoy my, my intro and outro. I made a new one because as I'm getting older, I kind of want more of like a, not classy vibe, but more of like a chill vibe. And I'm just getting to the point where I'm getting so comfortable in my skin and I'm like happy where I'm at right now. Like I'm really content with life. I can't complain, you know. I'm happy to be alive. I'm happy to have the mental state I do. I'm happy to just be here, you know, talking to you guys and having a platform. Oh my gosh, why do I feel emotional? Oh my God. I don't think you guys understand and I probably don't say it enough. Um, I really do thank each and every one of you for being here, following me. And uh, man, I have met so many great people through social media and you guys make me feel like family that you guys aren't my fans. You guys are my freaking family. It's not funny. I've grown so close to a lot of you that I just want to say I love you. Thank you for following me. Thank you for, uh, dude, we're at 300 and, oh my God, 322,000 subscribers. Bro, I got my YouTube plaque in three months. I don't know what's happening. This video, <laughs> this video took a turn. <clears throat> I'm actually a real big dog <sighs> and there's a strong wing. <laughs> wing? There's a strong wing. <laughs> there's a strong wind in this house. But no, guys, I'm very appreciative of it. I know that I probably don't have a super emotional side because... I don't know. I don't know if it's being raised by military family that I really don't cry as much as I, I want to or should as a girl. 
but I'm grateful every day to even be on a platform helping people. And don't worry, y'all, I see your messages. I see your heartfelt messages. I love interacting with you guys. I love when I have sessions with you guys. I love being able to help you, whether it's making you smile, making you feel like you're worthy in this world. And like, it's sad to me that, you know, a lot of women are against men and a lot of women put men down. And I think the reason why it bothers me so much is because I grew up in a male dominant home, you know, like my brothers, um, my grandpa, all that. So like, it was a big impact on my life that you probably can never understand. And I want to say something that like, um, I don't really talk about, but I just want to share this with you so that you guys understand. I have a lot of people constantly like, um, you know, you're a grifter, you're this, you're that, because either I'm tattooed or don't fit the traditional standard to whatever you think. If you go to East LA right now, you will see cholas with cholos that have been together since they were 16, 17 years old and they're blasted. My family is Hispanic. They're blasted as well. A lot of the women in my family are married. A lot of the women in my family have had husbands that are incarcerated and they held it down for 10 years. One of my uncles just got out of prison like a couple years ago and she held it down for years and they have kids. So when you think I'm saying this, oh, I want views, I want this. No, I want to be heard. I want people to understand that not every woman looks the same. I don't, I don't under, think you understand my message. I don't think you understand where I'm coming from. I might not fit your beauty standard. I might not be white and sweet and innocent, but that doesn't mean I can't be a wife. That doesn't mean I don't give a fuck about the world. That doesn't mean I don't care about men. Just because you're used to stupid bimbo bitches, I'm not one of them. I actually give a fuck about men's mental health. I lost my best friend um, due to unaliving himself. So if you don't understand why I make the content I do, shut up. You know what I mean? And I just want to add this. Um... Like I was saying before with my mom being a drug addict, I got taken away from my mom at birth because I was withdrawing from drugs. So that's already bad itself, you know? My mom kept me away from my dad. That's why I talk about let your kids see their father because I am a product of that. I got to feel what it feels like to be separated from my dad my whole life. And when I met my dad, he's my best friend. You understanding what that feels like? Do you understand what a mother did to me? You know what I mean? I forgive my mom, I love her, but you can never understand what I had went through as a kid. And I still come on here representing for men and helping them, even though people call me a dumbass, even though people say I shouldn't advocate for men, I can care less what you think. It's only making me want to fuel, it's only fueling me to do it more. But the last thing I want to say is I almost got adopted by a Filipino lady. And she used to say, come to Yaya Taylor. I would not be the Taylor I am today. My brother, legally emancipated himself because they wouldn't give me to my grandma. They wouldn't give me to my dad. They wouldn't give me to anybody because they knew that I was going to be around my mom. My brother didn't like my mom. I'm sorry. I have to say it. My brother took custody over me and took care of me at what? 17, 18 years old. So to you, I might be a pick me to you. I might be a grifter, but you don't know shit about me. And that's something I just never wanted to share because I just don't feel like I should. But now that I'm a little bit more comfortable on social media and I really don't care, I don't think you understand how much my brother saved my life. I don't even think I'd be here. I'd be probably in the Philippines or a whole different tailor, not tattooed. I'd be a nurse probably. So thank you to my grandpa. Thank you to my grandma. Thank you to my brothers for molding me into the woman I am today. And the one person I can say I honestly truly thank from the bottom of my heart and it's my grandma's birthday today. My grandma has molded me into the woman I am today. My strong values, cooking for a man, serving a man, loving a man, caring about their mental health, that all comes from my grandma. It comes from God and my grandma. So I know that a lot of you guys weren't raised around certain things, but I was raised at least with my grandma in a happy home. My grandma didn't abuse me. My grandma called me beautiful. My grandma held me. My grandma was a very sweet woman. But please understand, I came from a woman, my mom, who wasn't the greatest. Like I said in the clip before, she was very abusive, didn't feed us, didn't take care of us, and I was in and out of foster care because of my mom. So when I talk about these topics, that's why I'm yelling at the top of my lungs. That's why I'm so passionate. Because I know what it feels like to not have that. I know what it feels like to have a woman degrade a man and a man lose everything because I've seen it with my own eyes. And because I have so many brothers, I've watched my brothers get hurt. I've watched girls cheat on them and lie to them. And who's the one who is holding them? Who's the one that was consoling them when I was younger and they were older than me? Me. So I understand you don't know me. And I understand you might take it as, oh, she's doing this for views. Nah, man. I have a big heart. 
a really big heart. And because my brothers did a lot for me, to me, this is like, if I die tomorrow, I feel like I'm, I'm doing my purpose. I feel like this is my sole purpose in life is to help people. I feel like God gives everybody a, a gift in life and mine is to help people. I'm a natural healer, you guys. I would rather sit here, talk to you, fix you, help you get to be better just to see you smile. I love to see people laugh. I don't know if that sounds weird or not, but like I love when I meet people and they're just like real shy or like maybe they might not like me and I love to make them laugh. I even love when women come to me and say, I don't like your content. I hate you as a person, but I want to see what this session is about. By the end of the session, she fucking adores me. Oh girl, let me follow you. Let me this. Exactly. Don't assume because you see my content, I can't stand women. Don't assume because you see my content, I'm ran through. I never had a hoe face. I've never been disrespectful to people who didn't deserve it. I'm not an evil person. Have I been mean? Hell yeah. But that's because of trauma and anger. Now that I've surpassed that, I just want to help you be happy. I want to help you be better. I want to help you feel confident as a woman. I never felt confident in my skin until now. Now, I'm not going to say I'm a 10. My personality's a 10. My mindset's a 10. But I feel like I'm a 7. But I'm, I'm being honest, y'all. I just want to see you smile. I just want to make you happy. And all my followers and stuff, I fucking love y'all. You don't understand, man. If I die tomorrow, I'm so glad I got to experience even just a little bit of this. In such a short amount of time, I've been on World Star, what, six, seven times? And now this? Ah, uh, you don't understand, y'all. Let's eat this last one so I can get off this shit. But no, y'all, I just want to give you like more stuff about me because I know that I'm a little bit closed off with certain things. It's just, I feel like a lot of people don't understand people, you know, they want to see the worst in people. They want to, oh, you're this and oh, you're that. Like people just try to find demons in everybody instead of finding good. You're so used to the people you're around that are evil and malicious to you that you don't even know that there are some people out here that are good. I never said I was perfect. I never said I wasn't toxic. I never said I, I was the greatest girl on earth. I have never said that. I used to be a piece of crap. I used to hate myself when I looked in the mirror. I don't lie about anything, you guys. I've told you. So that's why I always laugh that people act as if I'm being this arrogant piece of crap where I think I'm the shit. Fuck no. I'm a work in progress, you guys, and I'm learning every day to be a better person. And even if you guys want to give me criticism and help me to be better, that's fine as long as you do it in a respectful manner. But as far as my tattoos, that's something I don't give a fuck about your opinion. Because you guys talk to women who are pure innocent and they cheat on your ass. Look at Ariana Grande. Look at all these women that have no tattoos, fit the beauty standard, are sweet and innocent, cheating on your ass fucking you guys up. So stop assuming because somebody has tattoos that they're going to bomb on you. They have tattoos, they're fighter. They have tattoos, they're ran through. How do how does tattoos correlate with ran through? What the fuck? That is, I'm sorry. That don't even make any sense. I can understand trauma. I definitely can understand trauma, but ran through, I'm getting a tattoo cuz I suck 60 peepees. How does that sound? <laughs> that doesn't even sound right. Okay. Like I said, whatever y'all. We finna eat this last one. <laughs> y'all make me laugh. But yeah, guys, definitely I'll make another poll thing or whatever and see what we eat next. I'm pretty sure it's going to be sushi or wings, but I want to have more questions. I hope you enjoyed this video, y'all. I have to get off this because I have to do a session like in the next five, six minutes. I'm on perfect timing. Thank you so much, guys, for 300,000 subscribers. I fucking love each and every single one of you. Like, you don't even understand. I love you. You're the prize. Your mental health matters. Thank you for being a part of my life. Thank you for supporting me, you guys. Thank you. I really, I, I can say it a million times. Thank you. And when I hit 500K, you guys, I want to do a big raffle. And I'm being honest, y'all. I'm pretty sure by next year, probably halfway through, I'll be at 500K. Watch, mark my fucking words. Because I was at 300K in the beginning of the month. It's barely the 21st or whatever, and we're almost getting close to 400K. I'm gonna, I want to have a big raffle. I want to have a couple things for men and a couple things for women, and I want to give you guys like care packages of my own with like a personalized note. But I'll probably have like the raffle uh, uh, beforehand, maybe before Christmas or something. And all you got to do, well, I'm not going to say too much. I won't say too much because I want it to be a surprise. But yeah, whenever the raffle does happen and stuff, you guys, I definitely want you guys to take pictures and videos with what you have so that I can post it and stuff. And by the way, y'all, my Instagram is it's Tay Tay Baby. Um, if you guys want to send me like workout videos of you or like if you guys want to collab with me, I'm going to start doing on Tuesdays and Thursdays um, like little little debates or little talk throughs with you guys. So if you guys want to join me on StreamYard and we could talk and like, um, you know, 
share ideas, maybe collab and stuff like that. I'm so down with that, you guys. I'm more than welcome to help you get to the top. I'm more than welcome to help you, you know, learn how to get content um, up there, how to get viral quicker and stuff like that. I can definitely help you if you guys need help. As long as it comes from a respectful place and we're trying to help each other and stuff, I'm all down for that, you guys. But um, thank you so much, you guys, a million times for watching this video. Like, I love you guys. Thank you for 300,000 subscribers. God bless you guys. Have the best day ever. I love you.